Good evening. It is Pastor Trish, and it is Tuesday, September 22nd. Last evening, we began our week with Psalm 74. And if you remember correctly, it was a psalm without an answer. A psalm crying out to God for help. A psalm of community crying to God. And at the end of that psalm, they were still waiting for an answer. Psalm 75 completes that uh, crisis that the community was undergoing. And we hear from God this evening. So it's a fairly short psalm. Let me look here. Ten verses. And um, I have my eyes are getting old, right? You understand that. I thought it was a 10. I had to look twice. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a fairly short psalm. And the psalm, there's some scholarly discrepancy. But what's unique about this psalm is that it has different voices in it. I had a conversation with somebody a week or two ago asking why does it sometimes address God, sometimes say I, sometimes say you. And different voices are talking in different psalms. And tonight's Psalm is a perfect example of that. First, in the very first verse, we hear from the people. And if you remember, again, last night we talked about these are Psalms of Asaph, and uh, they are communal Psalms, Psalms given uh, to God, liturgy, those kinds of things on behalf of a community. Gosh, that's a really strange bird sound that I have not yet heard in my backyard. I'm curious if I find out what it is when we're done, I'll let you know. Or if you know, let me know if you can hear that bird. So the first verse is the community and giving thanks to God because they have gotten answers from God. God has acted. And then in the second and third verses, God says. And so we hear directly from God or we hear the voice of God. Then Verses four through nine, that's where people, the scholars are like, oh, they're not too sure. But it, it still might be God speaking. Some would argue that. Others would say it's a new voice and it's a response to God. And then the psalm ends one more time with God saying. Um, what you are going to hear is that God does act in God's time when God believes it's time. To act knows I shouldn't say believes knows it's time to act and the other piece of this that I am letting sit with me is something I read that said um, God returns to a faithful people God returns God acts when God's people are ready to be faithful once again so think about the uh, the history, the story, think about all of the biblical stories where we know over and over again, especially in the Old Testament, God calls people to God's covenant, God's promise. The people respond with faith. And then after a while, they move away from that promise, from that covenant, and they begin to lose sight of God, begin to no longer care about the covenant, go toward their evil and wicked ways. Natural consequences occur, judgment happens, things happen to them and eventually they repent and return to God and they say we're sorry and God always of course responds with God's mercy and grace. And so we hear that again. And uh, like I said, what I had heard or what I had read said God wants to come, God will return to people who are faithful, to those who are seeking an active relationship with God, to those who are righteous, to those who want to be truthful, loving, faithful to God. And as always, I can't help but put uh, what we read in scripture, what I read in scripture, I can't help but put into my daily context of what's happening in my life and what's happening all around me. And it makes me wonder if we can't see God at this point, and if we wish God would act and it feels like God isn't, I wonder if it's not God that's not acting, but if it's us that's not acting, if we have not yet made a desire to be faithful people, and if we have not yet um, asked for forgiveness 
and asked for that active relationship um, to continue or to be renewed once again. I certainly know I have many faults and, um, and it's easy to stray from God. And so I, I wonder about that for me as an individual, for my community, for my world. So there's where my brain goes, but let's get to the Psalm. This is Psalm 75. And as I read it, I'm going to walk you through one more time, the different voices. First, the people speak. We give thanks to you, God. Yes, we give thanks. Your name is near. Your marvelous deeds are declared. God says, when I decide the time is right, I will establish justice just so. The earth and all its inhabitants will melt, but I will keep its pillars steady, God says. And then we have a new voice enter the conversation. I said to the arrogant, don't be arrogant. To the wicked, I said, don't exalt your strength. Don't exalt your strength so highly. Don't speak so arrogantly against the rock. Because what exalts someone doesn't come from the east or west. It's not from the south either. Rather, it is God who is the judge. He brings this person down, but that person he lifts up. Indeed, there is a cup in the Lord's hand full of foaming wine mixed with spice. He will pour it out, and all of the earth's wicked people must drink it. They must drink every last drop. But I will rejoice always. I will sing praises to Jacob's God. And finally, God says, I will demolish every bit of the wicked's power, but the strength of the righteous will be lifted up. Tonight, I pray, God, that you indeed will demolish every bit of the wicked's power and the strength of the righteous will be lifted up. And I pray that I can be made righteous, that I can be righteous, that I can do your work, God. Amen. Amen. Have a good evening, and we will be back on Thursday.